video walkthrough on a 2014 Avenger. First things first in the back, you got your water heater. So for the only thing you guys will have to do is put your plug in your drain. Uh, it's 15 16 socket. We'll get it started by hand. I get it started by hand as much as I can by hand and it goes in there. And then I, like I said, 15 16 socket, I use a little extension and a ratcheting wrench. They do make a tool you can buy here for it. But that's more like a traditional box end wrench, and you know, I always end up scraping my knuckles on here. Once you put that in there, you could uh, once you hook up water to it, it'll start filling, and you're good. To, you're good to turn it on. This is a uh, gas only. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> then you'll be good. It'll the, your burner will cycle on and off to help regulate whatever temp, not whatever temperature the 120 degrees cutoff it has to it. And then I always recommend draining it after every trip. So if you spent three or four days up there, um, at the end of your trip, drain your water heater. Before you drain your water heater, crack your pressure relief. Water will come out of here. Everything's okay to come out. Snap it closed. Make sure you snap this close. Don't set it closed. It gets a good seal snapping it. Then you can pull your plug out. Um, pull your plug out. Let it drain. Set your plug aside. If you neglect to do this first before you pull your plug out, and you, especially if you've been running it, there's a lot of pressure in there, and it's gonna you're gonna get a hot bath. You're gonna it's gonna shoot this plug out somewhere. You might lose it, so always relieve your pressure first. And other than that, keep it really clean in here, and in there. Um, you'll know it's starting to get bad if you when you have a flame that flames up. Um, if it gets real bad and it hits this right here, the water heater won't work until parts are replaced. So just keep it clean in there. Bumper, bumper caps come off. That's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose in there. All four corners, you have your stabilizer jacks. These aren't meant to really pick up the camper, but rather um, stabilize it. If you want it level, you'd use your tongue jack to front, to front and back, and then as you're backing it in, you back it onto some blocks onto the low side. So there's that. Inside you have an outdoor shower right here. And let's see if we can unlock it right here. Hot and cold out here. It's good for pets, or if you got kids that got muddy, you can spray them down. You have a cable inlet here. The park provides cable, you can hook it up through there. City water connection. So if you are Running from the uh, from a hose at the campground, hook it up through here. You won't need to run your pump or anything. This provides all the pressure you need. 30 amp show cord. This does come out here more. It's built in, so all you do is you stuff it in there when you're ready to when you're done. And then you can also close it like this. That keeps it neat. Yep, 30 amp. Blow that. Get your sewer. On your left is your gray. On your right is your black. I always make sure these are all the way closed. You just push them and pull them um, all the way closed like that before I take this cap off because that section is going to be filled with some residue. If you left these valves open, then I always do my black tank first, then my gray. The gray is going to flush out your hose so you don't have to carry around a to hose that was had black tank water. And those two right there, hot and cold, those are your low point drains. So you can crack those open, that'll drain some of the water out of the lines. Your seals, every once in a while you want to inspect your seals, look at them, make sure they're not dry or cracked or anything like that. I recommend doing that two or three times a year, just looking at them. And I definitely recommend performing what's called a slide-out maintenance once a year on them. And we can provide that service so you can do it. It's not terribly difficult. Um, we saw the product here to do it. Let's see if we can't sneak through here. inside the slide. So as you can see, our fresh tank is draining. We did fill it so we can check to make sure the pump and all that works. So that's your drain for it right there. This is your plug for it. So when, when it's done draining, I'll put this plug back in here. So when you wet, if you want to use your fresh tank, it will fill up. And this is where you fill it from. So you just rest your hose in there. Don't jam it in there. Turn it on, start filling. There's a monitoring panel inside. You can monitor its progress. 
If you start seeing water escape from around your house, from around here, um, you fall. Before we go into that storage, we will talk about some good information here. This has your VIN on it somewhere right there. It's got tire pressure, 50 PSI, go off of this, not what your tires say. It's got your gross vehicle weight rating, your gross axle weight rating, all the good information on here. There, weight of cargo should not exceed, so you got 1,656 pounds, so that includes luggage, full. if you had filled your fresh tank, if all your tanks were full, that include, that's included in that. Pass through storage, you get access to it from the bed, too. So you have an awning rod and a, and a crank handle. That crank handle works for these. You can also use a three-quarter inch socket on a, uh, on a drill that runs them. If you are going to use it that way, just make sure you lubricate them a little bit more often. Um, this WD-40 is on the threaded rod. There's a threaded rod that goes in the center of it. WD-40 on that keeps them lubricated really good. Battery. It's a brand new battery. It's a Group 24 RV Marine Grade battery. In the winter, I recommend taking your battery completely out, storing it somewhere warmer, like your garage if you can. Because um, the winter is harsh on these batteries. And uh, if it's going to be a couple weeks between trips, I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off your battery. Propane tanks. So, just unscrew these. the side you can fold that up give your tanks down in there you got an automatic change of a regulator right here you can see this little black thing right there it's pointing that way you're gonna pull from this tank first now both of these are off from right now um, if you had them both off it'll pull, pull both on rather sorry excuse me it'll pull from this tank first once one, this one's empty it'll automatically switch to pulling from the other tank However, this little black bar won't move, indicating that it has switched. So, keep that in the back of your mind. And some people have this in the middle like that, thinking, oh, I'm going to use the tanks evenly. It doesn't work that way. It's one or the other. This is kind of difficult to do. There we go. And this just flips up, and these tighten down. But it can be a little difficult to do. There we go. One-handed with while well, filming. There we go. You can't actually take this whole thing off too if you wanted to. Got your breakaway cable right here. So this, this, this will get hooked up with your vehicle along with all your hitch work. And if any of that were to come undone, it'll pull this pin in this box, activate the brakes on the trailer. Moving along. Other part of that storage, you got your crank handle and your awning handle so for your awning it's very simple to use undo these latches there's one of these on each arm you come up there use your awning stick you flip this you pull this little gray thing down there's even a little chart there up and down pull it down you come over here you hook it up to here you pull the awning out it'll come out to about here ish that's hard to do one-handed, so I can't show you in the video because I'm doing it one-handed. But it's very easy to use. And then once it's out, you can adjust them. There's a spot where you can pull and pull down to adjust. And then to get it in is just as easy. I recommend holding this strap will be will be dangling when it's all the way out. Holding the strap with one hand, reaching over with your stick. You push the lever in the opposite direction. The reason you want to have a hold of this is because now it's going to want to roll up. So hold that, flip it up, roll it in. Sometimes you have to give them a little assistance to roll them in. Push on the arms and whatnot. Very simple to use. Plus, there's no motors or anything you have to worry about failing on you. Moving along. Outdoor power, it's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit, so if one was gonna trip, they're all gonna trip. Sauce for your furnace, just keep it clean in here. They make screens for these. They don't recommend you run them with the screens on, but as far as like storage, 
perfect from keeping for keeping insects from building to building nests in there. Similar deal with the fridge. Keep it clean. Clean up in here. Even if you wanted to, you could pop this whole panel off and clean it back there. Oh, don't want to skip something. Up here is your vent for your range hood. So if you are using a range hood, you have to these little plastic tabs right there, kind of to see. You flip them over, and that lets this flap swing freely, and it'll get pushed out by the airflow. That actually allows the fumes or fumes from whatever you're cooking to be vented out of here. Um, excuse me. I rec definitely recommend closing that overnight because sometimes you get some insects in there. At least for our for ours, our camper we have. Um, sometimes we get insects in there if we don't close it overnight. And then definitely close that when you're traveling because that'll it'll be it'll be flapping when you travel. Storage. More storage, and then this panel right here. There's three screws. You can take that off. That gets back to the behind the water heater for putting it in and out of bypass for winterization. And that pretty much concludes the outside. We'll we'll head on inside. Inside's pretty simple. So your bedroom, each of these lights, you turn on and off from the fixtures. So those ones too. Keep a spot for the TV in the bedroom here. There's a backer even. Even says right there, and you have power, and then coax right there. Antenna right there, very simple to use. You just crank it up, rotate it. It's a nice chart saying which way is up, which way is down. Once it's up, you can pull this down, and you'll be able to rotate this, and that rotates the whole antenna assembly. Now, before you lower it, you want to make sure these triangles are lined up. There's a V-shaped cradle on the roof that the antenna sits in. So if that's not lined up and you lower it, your antenna could be poking out the edge, it could be facing the wrong way, it could just not be lined up in the cradle. So keep those little triangles lined up before you lower it. You have an outlet either side of the bed. Charge your phones and either set an alarm if you want to set an alarm, have an alarm clock. Here's an access to that same storage, and this one has a little rod you can use right there to hold it up. Good for extra blankets and stuff. Little accordion doors right here. Undo them. And then they just... They clip in. There's this little hole. Little tab that lines up. Clips in right there. And then you have your strap. It's got buttons on both sides. You can button it. Button it in over here. Go over... I always recommend strapping these when you're traveling because they will they'll kind of bounce around if you don't strap these in. That's pretty much it for the bedroom. It's not a whole heck of a lot in there. Little entertainment area. You have a spot for a TV here. Looks like the previous owners had one mounted. You could you could set it and just rest it there. Just make sure if you don't have it mounted and you're just setting it on here, you you want to move it because when you travel it it will fall. You have a spot for coax that they already ran down to there, and we'll get into more of that. And then, um, uh, the AV, the yellow, the composite, the yellow, red, and white. That is for your radio because your radio is also a DVD player. Power it on. Hit power. Let's turn that down. Uh, so you have different modes A and C. Ignore B. A is inside. So if you can hear it, inside's off. Just the outside is on. And then C turns the outside off. Leave the inside on. So that's good if people are inside napping, you still want to listen to music, you can turn it off the inside, and then vice versa. You have auxiliary, it turns on auxiliary mode, so you can hook your phone up through auxiliary right here. You have a USB there. You can select AM, FM for there. Then you have a couple different FMs, three different, and that's just so you can have more than six presets. So the presets are just like your radio in your car. You just push and hold to save a preset. These are also going to be for your, your control for your uh, DVD player, pop a DVD in through here. You have enter, you can confirm settings and all that when you mess with the tuning and stuff like that. You have, let's see if we can't find it. Where was I gonna find it? Oh, right in front of me. Mute button so you can mute it. Other than that, very simple to use. Nice big buttons, clearly labeled. I like these style of radios. 
Why don't need that? Get power. That's where you would run your power for your TV. You'd run it down through here, down through there, and then right here. Then you have a booster right here. So you can see a little light there, and there's a little tiny button right there. If you're going to use your antenna, make sure that's on. If you're going to use cable, turn it off. This couch turns into a bed. It's like a traditional, um, like, you fold out bed, so you move these bottom cushions, and then it's, this just pulls out like an old-style pull-out bed. Another GFCI outlet there, and one there. You have your control for your slide out here. This one, this light switch just does this main light right here. So you come in, you turn that light on, it'd be bright enough for you to be able to go through and turn all the other lights on. And then this one to the right of that does this porch light right there. Very simple. Moving along, going through here. Microwave. Um, only works when you're plugged in. Works just like your microwave at home. Nothing super special about it. Range, range top, range vent, light, and you have a fan. If you're gonna remember what I said, if you run this fan, have that flap open or else it's not gonna do you any good. You don't have an oven in here, you just have a stove top. So you would turn it to light and light it with a barbecue lighter, a match, or whatever you got to light it. Fridge very easy to use. You have on or off. Auto or gas, so hit it, it'll be on gas. Gas is off right now, so it won't light. Auto is what I recommend using. It's going to default to 110. If someone were to trip over your short cord or the campground were to lose power, and your propane were to be on, which I usually, that's one of the first things I do is turn my propane on. Um, this will automatically switch to running off of propane. Now, unlike your fridge at home, these should take about mm, 9 to 12 hours to get to operating temperature. So if you can, plug it in the night before at home. Let it get let it get cold in there. Move it along. Thermostat, very simple. You have off, heat, go all the way to 90. And you have fan. That'll turn your AC on, but not the AC compressor. So it's just going to be running fan, the fan and circulating air for there. Then go to cool. That sets it to AC. So very easy to use. And then you have modes, auto high and low, that's fan speed. Auto is going to regulate whatever temperature you have it set to. So you have your AC set to 65. Once it senses it's reached 65 degrees, it's going to shut off. And it'll cycle back on and off to help regulate that temperature. And then you just have on, high or low. If you have it set to 65, it'll hit 65 and it'll keep going. Right below that, RV propane and carbon monoxide detector. That's hardwired to the 12 volt system. You got your breaker box. You got all your uh, your 120 volt breakers, all your 15 amp fuses. And you got two 40s. I recommend keeping some spares, just in case one of them goes out. One of them will be for your pump. One might be for your lights. So that'll save you if you need it. Bunks. This bunk up top is vented for the AC. Got a light there. And this bunk is not vented from the AC. So. That but it's got a light there. Very simple. And then they do have a 250 pound capacity. You have a vanity here with a light. Sink, basic sink. Right here's your controls for a water heater. Hit that on, the light will go on. Once it's lit and done, the light will go off. You can monitor your tanks here. So you got black, fresh, and gray. It'll read here. Then you also read battery. Boop. Battery is always going to read full if you're plugged in. And see the fresh is draining. So it was at full when I started. Now it's at a third. It drains slowly, but it'll drain. And with your fresh tank, that's one of those things. Just like your water, I recommend draining after every trip. Resettable GFCI right there. Oh, sorry. We're skipping. And this is your controls for your water pump. Turn it on. That runs your pump. Resettable GFCI outlet. So all your outlets GFCI. Or GFCI, if they trip, you have to come into this one and reset it at this outlet right here. And you can tell which outlets are GFCI because they all have a white sticker on them saying they're GFCI outlets. All right. Last little room, the bathroom. Very simple. You have a toilet. As long as you're pushing that pedal, it's going to keep flushing. Um, get your fan bed up here. Get the switch for it right here. Turn on off the fan. You can open and close your vent from here. Got your shower head. Let's, let's hang this back up here. 
There we go. And you have hot and cold. And if you want to divert water to your shower head, you pull this up. Otherwise, it's just going to make a bath. And that's pretty much it. We'll close this off. We'll close all these lights off as we go. That pretty much concludes the interior tour of your adventure.